So before iOS 14, if I was listening to a podcast and I got a really good insight from it, I'd have to open up Notion, go into the page where my resonance calendar was, open up my resonance calendar, and then and only then be able to capture the insight. My memory is so bad that in the 10 seconds or so that it would take to do that, I'd often forget exactly what I was gonna put in. Maybe some of you are thinking this is maybe a bit of an exaggeration, but what isn't an exaggeration is you can now get to any page in the Notion app with just two taps on the back of your phone. With Apple's new software update, iOS 14, there's a load of features that are gonna make your Notion use more efficient, faster, and more powerful. So let's take a look. Hey guys, for those that are new to the channel, my name's Tom, I'm a product manager and startup founder working in London. I make videos on how you can use Notion to live a more productive life. So if that sounds like your bag, bang subscribe and you'll be notified when I release new weekly videos. So this video is just gonna be a quick and dirty tutorial on Notion and iOS 14. We're gonna go through the setup of some of these really powerful new features, along with some use cases on how you can use them to make your life a little bit more productive. I'll leave the timestamps here so you can jump around if you want. Let's get stuck in. So first let's talk about how we can really use that back tap feature to eliminate friction, getting us to any page that we want within Notion in just two or three taps. The backbone of most of these improvements that we're gonna talk about in this video is the shortcuts feature on iPhone. So first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is actually go into Notion, find the page that you wanna quickly access, and then copy the link as a URL. Then open up the shortcut section of the app, click into add new shortcut, and then scroll down to open URL. Then all you need to do is take the URL of the link that you've just copied and paste it into this section. Then just rename the shortcut to something you can remember. For example, if there's a link to your journal, just call it journal shortcut and you're good to go. Now we've made that shortcut, what we wanna do is have it open when we tap on the back of our phones. So in order to get to the back tap feature, you need to go into settings, then go into accessibility scroll to touch and then scroll all the way down until you get to back tap. Here you're going to have a choice to either select something for double tap or triple tap and you can even set up shortcuts for both of them. I personally prefer to use the triple tap one because there's less chance that I'll accidentally triple tap the back of my phone uh, opening the shortcut when I don't necessarily mean to. So if you go into the double or triple tap, you can then scroll all the way down to shortcuts and then here you can put in the shortcut that you just created so that when you double tap on the back of your phone, it's gonna open up that shortcut for you. I find this feature really useful for things that I'm gonna be interacting with either very regularly or things that I don't find it easy to do. So for example, for me, journaling is a very hard habit to make stick. I don't know if any of you find that as well. I just find that eliminating the friction by being able to open it by just tapping on the back of my phone means that I'm more likely to journal every day. So the next thing we're going to talk about is using Siri to open shortcuts. Now, this isn't a new feature for iOS 14, but I think it is relevant in this video. And what we can do is with these shortcuts that you've created, and you can create as many as you want to open up specific pages in Notion, you can actually tell Siri to do that for you. So for example, with my weekly plan, it's not something that I have shortcutted to the back tab, but it is something that I interact with quite often. So what I'll sometimes do is just say, hey Siri, open my weekly plan, and then it's gonna open the shortcut that does that. I'm not the biggest fan of uh, Siri, to be honest, I find it a little bit uh, shizzy to be walking along being like, oh, open up my weekly plan and having people hear you, it just doesn't sound great. But if you're the sort of person that likes using voice control, then it can be really beneficial to just set up a load of these shortcuts for things that you use very regularly. The final thing that we can do on iOS 14 to improve our Notion experience is to really make use of the new customizable widgets that they've launched. Now, I'm not gonna go into huge detail about customizable widgets here. Thomas Franks actually made a really great video on that, so there's no point in me just duplicating his content. If making you know, a really sophisticated widget dashboard is something you're interested in, I'd recommend checking out that video. But I will just go through the fundamentals here. So custom widgets are just a really easy way for you to access things that you interact with very frequently. You can have ones for you know, weather and photos. And what we're gonna do is set up a folder for all of your different Notion shortcuts. To do that, what you're going to want to do is edit the widget screen, which works just in the same way as editing the home screen. You just tap and hold on one of the apps, and then you get an option in the top left-hand corner to add a new widget. 
If you click into this, you can then add shortcut widgets. You'll then be given a list of templates that you can choose between of how you want your shortcuts to appear. I personally like the one where there's sort of four all next to each other, so let's go for that. The one problem is that when you create this shortcuts menu, you'll see that it actually contains a list of all of your shortcuts. So I've got some for opening like Headspace and other apps, and I don't necessarily want these to be shown in my widget home screen. So what you can actually do is go back into the shortcuts menu and create a specific folder just for Notion shortcuts. Then just drag all of your Notion specific shortcuts into that folder go back to the widget home screen and edit that widget so that it's only gonna show you the Notion shortcut folder. And then you're just gonna have a really easy, accessible place where all of your Notion shortcuts are. So when you open your phone, you can just scroll to the left, open up the widgets and interact with any page on Notion directly without having to go through the pain of going into the Notion app and finding it yourself. So hopefully that's given you a few ideas about how you can get the most out of Notion using iOS 14. And I would just quickly like to talk about some of the pitfalls that you might want to avoid while setting up these kinds of shortcuts. Uh, I mean, why can't I just do a how-to video? <laughs> I don't know, I need to put some of this sort of commentary in, um, but I guess that's just my style. So what we're talking about here when we're talking about all of these shortcuts is something called eliminating friction. Now, you might know friction as, you know, the force when two surfaces come together, but when we talk about it in a product development point of view, all we mean is the effort required to get a user from where they are to actually taking the action that we want them to take. Now, eliminating friction is a really good thing for things and habits that you want to stop doing. If you want to start running, putting your trainers at the end of the bed, getting your clothes ready the night before, these are all great things you can do to eliminate friction. And likewise in the digital world, if for example me, I struggle, really struggle with the idea of keeping a daily journal, so completely eliminating the friction of that, having it that I can open it up with two taps is great. But what you don't want to do is eliminate friction for things that you actually find yourself doing naturally anyway, or even things that you would rather do less. Now this is really obvious in some examples, you know, if you're using Instagram or Twitter a lot, then you don't want to be setting up shortcuts for them. But there's some slightly less obvious ways where reducing the friction might not necessarily be the best thing to do. For me, this is my to-do list. You know, initially it might think, okay, a to-do list is a productive thing to have. And yes, it is, like to know what you're doing every day. But for me, I was finding myself going into my to-do list all the time to you know, update my tasks, to rearrange priorities, to drag things back and forth, to see what's coming up. So to set up a shortcut for that wouldn't necessarily be the best thing to do. And this is just a few like sneaky ways that using Notion can feel productive when actually it's not. So just something to bear in mind when you're creating these shortcuts, you know, have in your head, why am I doing this? What's the benefit gonna be? And you're gonna be in a much better position. So if you like that video, um, I'm gonna leave a playlist here of other Notion guides that you might wanna check out. And thanks a lot for sticking around and enjoy the rest of your day.